NFL draft and rookies. Hell yeah. Podcast off the rails already. But there is not a chance in hell Justin Fields is finishing <laughs> in the top 10. There you, you know go. what, Mikey? <laughs> Shut it. He wants Why it. not? You don't want the smoke. He's Calvin Johnson. He's Calvin oh, Johnson. Oh, good God. Oh, my yes. God. Yes, 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 and yes. What are we going to do with you? It just, you know, just add, it adds a little extra flavor to the podcast. I, mean. uh, I, I think you're disrespecting David Njoku. <laughs> Thank God yeah. for Joe Flacco. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll help the owners. Don't draft Kadarius Tony. But I got to give the people what they want. I mean, come on. It's, I mean, I'm going to milk it. I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. I'll give you something to milk. It was rock and roll. What is up, MHA owners? We're less than two weeks away from the 2024 MHA draft. I'm actually getting a little excited about it myself. Mikey just let us know he got the draft board in. Todd drooling at the mouth to get to bring in Jameer Gibbs to his squad this season. September 1st can't get here soon enough. Thanks for tuning in to the Mile High Affiliates podcast. Of course, myself, Eric Lansing with Todd Diamond, Mikey Renault. Gentlemen, what's going on Tuesday evening here, August 20th? You know, ready to talk, you ready to, you know, say some outrageous, you know, bold predictions and, you know, see if they stick. I don't know. And I say a lot of I say a lot of outrageous things on this podcast. So this this particular one, you know, it's it, it's warranted. So it's OK. Well, so I feel like we get a bold prediction from Todd every week. So is this like double boldness during this on this a- bold predictions episode? Oh, this is this this might this might break the podcast. This might break it. Oh like say break the internet. This might just break the podcast. Oh wow, I'm ex- that, that's interesting. That's a nice little teaser. So yeah, on the show, sleepers, busts, bold predictions. Mikey, how we doing? Doing great. I mean, drafts like what two weeks away? Less yeah, less than, than less than. Yeah, I feel pretty prepared. Do you? I, I feel the same way. Like I feel like I'm like miles ahead of where I was last year. Yeah, feel good about it. Good. Todd, do you feel the same as Mike and I, or now are you shaking in your your fancy sneakers that Mike and I are like super prepared this year? Because we're gonna take down the champ, right? Hey, that the that's awesome. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, it no, it, it's it. It, make, it makes the it makes the le- you know it makes the league you know and the season great, knowing that you know I have the target on my back, and you know sometimes it's the other way around. So I have to say to you know to the whole league, just bring it, just bring it. Um, you know, um, you know, you know, the saying goes, everybody thought what I was, what I was going to do if I didn't win. Well, I guess we'll never know. I didn't want to say that quote because it's Kanye West. I don't like him, but that's, that's the one, but, but I just was that, 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 that one's warranted. It's like, everybody thought what I was going to do if I didn't win. Well, guess what? I guess we'll never know. Before we get to the news, I just want to ask Todd a question. Um, Yes. You know, last week on the show, you were talking up Malik Neighbors. You know, Mike and I were trying to tell, trying to talk you out of such a high ranking of Malik Neighbors. I don't know if you saw Daniel Jones last this past week, but did that change your mind at all? Are you still high on Malik Neighbors? I'm still high on him because I think that I think he's that talented of a wide receiver that he, that he can maybe <clears throat> make up for it. I know, wrong, I know, but um, yes, yeah, two interceptions. I know doesn't you know doesn't doesn't help my case, but. Um, I think he's still talented enough, and they're going to find ways to get him to get him the ball. Who? Daniel Jones. Hey, if they hey, if they if they have to, you hand know, ball off. <laughs> yeah, hand it off or screen pass. I don't care. Either way, yeah, just get we him saw the- what he tried to do with that screen pass. He threw it right <laughs> to the other team. Well, I mean, he had some. I mean, again, and for whatever it's worth, he had some. He had some. He had some spectacular catches. But I mean, that he did. I can't deny that. But but I, I agree that yes. I mean, it's. Yeah, Daniel Jones, you know, didn't, you know, obviously didn't change anybody's mind, but I think Neighbors at least is that talented enough where, you know, he can maybe make up for it if they can get him the football. But we'll see. I mean, I'm not drafting Daniel Jones, so let's let's let's, let's get that notion out of let's get that notion out of the podcast uh, universe. If you draft right now. Daniel Jones, I guarantee you don't win the championship. Well, yeah, I'm not. I I I, I, I say a lot yeah, of things ask, and ask Paulin. I mean, he is drafting first. 
Oh yeah, he could. He's he can have he can have him if he wants him. No, he doesn't want Daniel Jones. <laughs> I think he's Learn, learned, his learned that lesson. Yep. He'll, draft right. C, he'll draft C.J. Stroud, watch. <laughs> oh, you know it. Uh, let's get to the news. I don't That's... understand what the news is. It's Wait. just like, hey, here's a bunch of <laughs> you can't fix that happened that was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a lot of news here, but I'm going to start off with the most interesting, at least in terms of fantasy, Garden, Gardner Minshew. The starting quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders, <laughs> Mikey and I were, and Todd, we were all hanging out together the other day and talking about Devontae Adams. And I mentioned something about building rapport with O'Connell. Doesn't matter anymore. Mikey, do we, should we feel, or should owners feel better about Devontae Adams with Minshew in the mix now? Yes, I like it much better than Aiden O'Connell. Like Minshew's just a better quarterback. And so. I don't really care about rapport when the rapport is with a below average player. So yeah, I like Adams. It moved Adams a little bit up in my rankings. Well, we'll see how high you have him in the rankings. Cause we'll talk about some, some sleepers and stuff. And I think that's going to come up on one of my bus candidates. Uh, just looking at Gardner Minshew's numbers, uh, his highest touchdown over a full NFL season was 17 or excuse me, 21 way back in 2019 last year had 15 touchdowns and 10 games, no 17 games played 13 starts. Uh, So we'll see if, uh, and he did that with Indianapolis last year. Michael Pittman was a solid fantasy wide receiver. He didn't have a a lot of touchdowns, but he had a lot of receptions. So uh, let's move on to the next news. Uh, Speaking of quarterbacks and starting jobs, Jaden Daniels, really no surprise. The number two overall pick in this year's draft will be the starting quarterback by the Washington Commanders. Uh, I don't think there's really anything we need to say. That's not anything new. Uh, Jalen Warren, Pittsburgh starting, or no, let's just say Pittsburgh running back in the mix for starting reps, suffered a hamstring injury on Saturday, will miss the rest of the regular season, or excuse me, the rest of the preseason, and may miss a week or two in the regular season. Todd, does this lower Jalen Warren in your rankings or, in, or brings up Najee Harris in your rankings? It, bring, it brings Najee Harris up for sure. Uh, this is, you know, I mean, you know, we go back to his, you know, his rookie year and, you know, how he, you know, was going to be the starter. He was going to primary back and how he kind of had, you know, an, an up year, down year, up, you know, up and down. I mean, it was, it was really bad. But now at this point, um, you know, he, there's another opportunity for Najee Harris now to really, you know, help his stock and, um, you know, maybe kind of solidify, you know, him as, as the, as the primary back and not worrying about Warren, you know, cutting into that time, regardless of how many weeks he's out for. Uh, Quarterback news here, Matt Stafford. This was kind of an up and down day for me. I was listening to a podcast that came out the day before saying Matt Stafford was dealing with a hamstring issue and golly, you do not want to see that from an offense that can just explode with so many different weapons and Cooper cup and Puka Nakua and Kyron Williams. And so you hear that he's having a hamstring. I'm like, Oh no. So I listened to the podcast as I was coming home. Cause I was on the light rail and he's back at practice. So that, that <laughs> to be okay. What a, what a crazy ride that was that day. Uh, more quarterback news. Justin Herbert was out of action uh, as we mentioned last week, but he was also back at practice uh, yesterday uh, Jaguars wide receiver Christian Kirk dealing with a calf injury uh, is missing practice this week. Doesn't seem to be serious, but just thought I'd mention it. Amari Cooper, uh, news from today, dealing with soreness. Doesn't specifically say what is sore, but he was not seen at practice. So you you could maybe his uh, confidence was sore or, his, or he was just sore in general in terms of how upset he was. I assume it's an injury and you hope it has nothing to do with, I mean, he's, he's got paid, right? He's not trying to hold out, but something to keep an eye on, I guess. Um, and the last thing, Todd's boy, Alvin Kamara dealing with back tightness, but he was seen at practice today. So yeah, there's the news. And, well, exciting. exciting. Well, I mean, okay. Maybe one exciting thing is I think we can agree just for oh my that, I know, and that we that we all agree that Bo Nix is going to be the starter. That he solidified that, yes or no? Has yes. it been announced? No, I'm just saying. But you think? I mean, I. I but you think? But you think that he's done enough? That that, that he's going to be the 
Okay. There. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. That's all I want to know. I just, I just want to get a, I just want to get a yes or no from the peanut gallery. That's all. That's all. <clears throat> yeah. He looked pretty, he looked pretty good. I will say. Okay. All right. That's all. I'll take that. But I think we can agree. He'll, he'll probably will be the starter. Yeah. I mean, he'll probably be MVP. <laughs> MVP of what? <laughs> of the of team, the... <clears throat> of the rookies, of the Bible club. <laughs> I hope you're not saying of the NFL because then I'm going to kick you off the podcast. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Sleepers. Now, what is a sleeper, you may ask? Well, most of you know what it is at this point, but someone that's probably going to outperform their average draft position. Guys, you think that maybe uh, people aren't looking at and that should be looked at. So these are more reasonable uh, type of predictions as opposed to bold predictions. So we're going to start with the quarterback position, and we'll let the champ, Todd Diamond, go first. Give me your sleeper quarterback. I told you guys to give me one from each position, and we'll see how we go, how long this podcast go. But, yeah, Todd Diamond, your sleeper quarterback. Uh, Will Levis from the Tennessee Titans. Um, obviously, you know, when he, he kind of came in midweek, uh, midseason, um, for the Tennessee Titans, but obviously, the you know, obviously one it's only one game, but uh, – you know, he had four touchdowns, but I think he's gonna I think he's gonna surprise I think he's gonna surprise a lot of people. Um, I had Will Levitz Will Levis, excuse me, say his name right there. Um, twenty seventh in my rankings, and I think he might surprise a lot of people and get into that, you know, top I'd say top twenty. Can you tell me why? Well, I think obviously he's got he's got he's got the arm strength. He's got the weapons around him with DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, obviously the running game, you know, helped him out a lot with Derrick Henry, but he's gone now, and I think they're gonna run. I think they're gonna throw the ball a lot as well too. And I think Will Levis, Will Levis, uh, will I think is gonna surprise a lot of people. Do you agree with that at all? And I don't want to get into this like, oh, Todd's wrong. I mean, it's a sleeper, right? It's not a guarantee. But what what do you think about Will Levis, Mikey? Uh, opportunity is there. I mean, they're they've gone from a team that is you know run first to a team that it would seem to be a more pass first offense, given you know that they'll eventually have Hopkins, they have Ridley, they brought in Tyler Boyd. Uh, Pollard can catch the ball out of the backfield. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. I mean, I think there's possibilities, you know, with Levis, you know, if he's, if they've chosen the right coach with Brian Callahan and they can get things going. Yeah, yeah. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Yeah. How about you, Miguel? Who, who do you have your sleeper quarterback? All right. Um, I had Aaron Rodgers. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> wow, Mikey gets the butt. All right. This is, this is awesome. <laughs> good start. Now go ahead. I'd love to hear it because I, I need someone to explain to me why he's going to be good. Look. Uh, sorry. I hey, 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 I... hey. Coach Payton, not in my room. <laughs> not in my room. I'm going to start using look and relative too. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, look, they uh, see that was an accident. Uh, I, I like what the Jets have done to improve their offensive line. They've got a pretty solid running game. I, I do worry about his mobility coming off of a torn Achilles. That's a, a big deal. But I don't feel that it's fair to judge his performance in his last year in Green Bay when – he was without Devonte Adams, and you know had a bunch of junk receivers with him. He's going to have one of the top receivers in the game in Garrett Wilson. He'll have that improved offensive line. I don't worry about Nathaniel Hackett because I believe it. Just like when Peyton Manning came here, Aaron Rodgers is going to be calling the offense on the field, so they're not not going to have the bunch of mishaps that like Hackett had here in Denver or last year with Zach Wilson. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just think. He, he really wants this to work and there's a lot of pressure. I think he's going to pull through and have a really good season. Now, whether that's, I, I think it has possibility to be top 10 for him, 
that's not my bold prediction, but the, yeah, I think he's a definite sleeper. Where did, um, and I didn't ask you guys to do this, but do you know where you have him ranked and how high do you think he could be? I don't want that to be the end all be all, but is that something where you feel like he can move five spots above where you have him? <clears throat> So I'm trying to remember. look at where yeah. he's going. I don't remember overall. exactly so where I had him. I might have had him like 13 or 14, somewhere around there. Oh, so you had him already higher than the consensus. Uh, like Fantasy Pros has him ranked 20th, uh, but, uh, right behind guys like Matt Stafford, Herbert, Cousins. I'm sure you have him over Herbert because I know you don't like him very much. But no. Lawrence, Goff, Tua, Caleb, those are guys in the top 13. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's I don't see any reason why other than his – age as an argument um which it it is a concern but i mean this is a guy that has a pretty good track record and so yeah i like my chances with this one aaron Rodgers from mikey renault um i think yeah uh, i'll go to mine uh i don't want to bad mouth i mean i think i think no 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 I, i mean I've already bring, talked about we, why we I don't like this. Rogers. I mean, we bring this stuff back at the and, end of the season, so I want you to say something. Sure, yeah. sure. I mean, and despite all this off the field nonsense, I think that plays a factor because of where does football rank in his priorities? I don't think it's number one. And when you're at this age, it needs to be because it's one small step, as we saw last year, that could just end your season. And I agree, their offensive line's top 10. The weapons are pretty good. I mean, you have it's top heavy. Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson are amazing. Mike Williams still isn't on the field. Tyler Conklin, if that's your tight end, it's mm, okay. There's but, some familiarity. He still has, you know, okay. I, 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 I'm not going to say like Alan Lazard's a great receiver or anything, but there's familiarity there. But it's been how many years since he had a top 15 season and i understand that it's because he didn't have Devonte adams but if you're going to be a good core i mean is is garrett wilson Devonte adams i don't i don't i wouldn't put him in that same possibly if you're talking about in his and that maybe that's a hint of, on, talk, jump on board the garrett wilson train <laughs> i just i just don't i don't feel it and you know i was thinking about this the other day because i knew you would bring something of, of and you've talked about Aaron Rodgers before and how many times I and mean, how many games have I watched with you and Todd where Aaron Rodgers did something amazing? I'm like, man, you just can't count him out. He is that good. Mm-hmm. Where like, I mean, we've seen like the Hail Marys and God, yeah, that was that was so long ago. <laughs> I was thinking about like, yes, like you can never count him out. But he's I mean, someone that's past 40. Uh, I just don't know, man. I mean. I don't love a good redemption story. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, okay. Anything else you guys want to say, or should I give you my sleeper? Go ahead. We're good. All right. So my sleeper, and I don't know if this is a sleeper. I think it's based on like my, maybe it's my initial thoughts. Like I feel pretty good and pretty good. Obviously the way quarterbacks are viewed is different because of rushing, but, the, but I mean, I like Anthony Richardson. I mm. think we haven't seen much from him. And so that obviously puts me a, like a little a little aback. But what we saw was pretty amazing. He's an electric type player. He's got a great offensive line. He's got some good receivers. I feel like this guy, I mean, I have him ranked 14th. If he stays healthy, I, and when we talked about it before, I, I think we all agree he's talented, but it, it's he had an AC joint shoulder sprain and then had a concussion in week two. And so can he hold up for an entire season, NFL season when we haven't seen that yet? And so that's why he's a sleeper. I think, I don't know if he'll get drafted as a starting guy, but if, if someone drafts late, like let's say, I don't know, let's say they draft Trevor Lawrence as their starting quarterback. Maybe their backup is going to be someone like Anthony Richardson. So if Trevor Lawrence proves that he can't take care of the football, can Richardson come in and be – a Kyler Murray type of player that can run the ball. Maybe he's a little bit better runner than Kyler Murray and be a little above average on the passing end of things. So I, I like Anthony Richardson. He could be a guy I draft depending on how the quarterback situation goes. Um, 
that that's always up in the air. Um, it just depends on how the draft goes. Uh, we kind of talked about it during the quarterbacks and like, oh, how many good quarterbacks are they? And I feel like it's pretty deep. But so, yeah, Anthony Richardson, my sleeper into this season. Anything you guys want to say or should we go to running backs? I, I don't I don't hate it either. I just I don't, I don't want to put him in a box, but I guess it just depends on what type of mobility he is. Uh, he's a bigger dude, a lot bigger than Kyler Murray. So does it is he more Lamar Jackson or is he more Josh Allen? I guess we're going to find that out. Sure. And, you know, he had, let's see, in his senior year at Florida, he had 654 yards rushing, 6.3 yards per carry, and nine touchdowns. And so maybe in the middle, maybe he's not going to be 1,200 yards, but he's not going to be the Kyler Murray 300, 400. But he's still learning the game too. So, I mean, there, there's there's a a process that he's still learning the speed of the game. And he learned it the hard way last year <laughs> by getting hurt. I don't know. So let's mosey on over mm-hmm. to running backs. I'll let Ta, excuse me, Mikey go first this mm-hmm. time. Mikey, give me your running back sleeper here for 2024. Okay, buckle up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, we, you guys thought I went with old with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, what? Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so here's the thing. I feel like, you know, Dallas, when Elliott left last year, lost something uh, with Tony Pollard. Like, and it wasn't, it had nothing to do with, you know, Elliott's age. I think they lost a big factor in the red zone. Like, you look at Dallas's red zone numbers uh, last year compared to the prior year with Zeke. I mean, it drastically changed. And it was because of Pollard being so ineffective once they got inside the 10 yard line. Like, they, Tony Pollard ranked six in all of the league with 30 carries inside the 10 last year. And he only had five touchdowns on those 30 carries, which is just pitiful uh it was a reason why Dak Prescott was so effective and led the league in touchdown passes was Tony Pollard was so bad in there they had to throw it in I think and that's Brand- part <laughs> I was just gonna say and Brandon Audrey was Audrey or Aubrey Audrey right uh, um, Aubrey he led the NFL in kicking last year yeah because <laughs> they had to kick field goals yeah but, sorry. and so yeah I think it was a big deal um for them to bring Zeke Elliott back because you know, the prior year, Zeke Elliott had 26 carries inside the 10 and had 11 touchdowns. So, like, it's just different type of back. Like, Zeke's more effective doing that. So, while I don't think that Zeke is going to be a big-time, you know, rushing for big yardage, I think he's he can be a valuable asset as somebody in a high-powered offense that gets down the field that's going to be able to put up touchdowns for you. So in terms of sleeper, I mean, he's going I'm trying to find this on fantasy pros here where he might be going. I mean, it's late. And so da, 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 I'm still looking down the list here for Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm in the 40s. I mean, they have Rico Dowdell at 43. And so, man, I am still not seeing. I must have passed him somewhere. <laughs> So I guess it just matters. If he's, is he all touchdowns? Okay, I'm sorry. He is 38th. So he's actually ranked ahead of Dowdell, who's ranked 43rd. He should so, be. Dowdell is, a, is garbage. He's bum. He's a bum. <laughs> so, I mean, is, is it like eight touchdowns and 500 rushing yards? Or is, no, he, all I think, touch, is he a Gus Edwards type of player? Sure. And yeah, I think there's potential for double-digit touchdowns. Like, you know, if they use him – in the way that I think that they can, then yeah, I'm thinking he can score 11, 12, 13 touchdowns. There you go. I mean, that's fantasy worthy. We've seen that yeah. from like Jamal Williams and uh, was it David? Oh gosh. Uh, Montgomery. Who I mean, he's a little bit better. He can, he reached a thousand yards. I don't want to put him in that category, but he had double digits, but so yeah, late round pick of a guy that can get 10 plus touchdowns. Listen to Mikey. That's a good sleeper. Todd, give me your running back sleeper. 
Well, this is a sleeper and a rookie, so um, you, you know you don't know what you're going to get. But Jonathan Brooks uh, from Carolina, um, obviously, like I said, I coming into this year, I didn't think the running back class was that great. But Jonathan Brooks looks like he is going to be the number one, um, you know, the number one, the number one running back in that offense. And um, I know running backs transitions a little bit easier, so maybe it's not quite a sleeper, but. I think Jonathan Brooks has an opportunity, you know, to at least rush for, I'd say at least 800 yards and maybe get five or six touchdowns, uh, depending on how uh, Bryce Young, you know, how he kind of comes into his second year um, at quarterback. So I think Jonathan Brooks, um, you know, is going to really surprise a lot of people. So I'm going to go with him. And, you know, obviously you all know I love rookies. So, um so this is one of my sleeper. I have him ranked 19th in my rankings. So I might have an opportunity to kind of creep into that, you know, maybe, you know, maybe close to maybe into the top 10 or maybe like on the outside a little bit. So I go with Jonathan Brooks. I think the the thing that might scare owners away is that I'm, I'm looking at it, a, a story that came out a few hours ago that, Brooks, who's been dealing with that knee issue and has not been practicing, may start the year on the PUP list. And if that's the case, he can't. If it's the regular season PUP list, he doesn't. He can't come back in what until week four, if I'm not mistaken. So does that does that hamper your sleeper pick, or do you feel that because I was looking at a couple different spots, they have him being drafted as the 35th running back overall. And so the, with this news and with people drafting him, knowing he's going to be on, that's why he's pushed down to 35th. Does that change how you feel? Do you still feel him as a sleeper? Uh, because once he comes back, maybe he can live up to the expectations. Yes, because if that is the case, and especially with rookie running backs, um, and with that, with that injury, that means he falls a little, he, he falls a little bit maybe into that, you know, maybe sixth round, maybe seventh round, and I feel comfortable drafting him there. And and if and if he, you know, if he's going to be out, obviously, you know, for the first, you know, three or four weeks, whatever the case may be, and he can come back, I'll I'll take that risk. I'll take that risk because he's not going to be my because he won't be my primary, you know, running back. You know that I'm drafting maybe in the first, you know, I don't know first five rounds or, or whatever the case may be. So I'd feel a little bit more comfortable waiting on him compared to the um, Jameer Gibbs situation, depending on how that kind of unfolds here as we t- less, you know, less a week away from the, from the, from the draft itself and, and from the regular season. Anything you want to say about Jonathan Brooks, Miguel? No, for me, it's, it would be hard for me to take him, in the, you know, sixth or seventh round, given that he's never played it down in the league. He's, if he's ended up on PUP, he's in a bad offense already. Uh, he, for me, he's a stay away. So Jonathan Brooks for Todd, Ezekiel mm-hmm. Elliott for Mikey. And I should, probably should have went right after Mikey just because of the segue, but my sleeper running back is going to be Tony Pollard. He's going around the 25th in terms of running backs. Actually, he is 28th on Fantasy Pros. But I think people are kind of forgetting about him a little bit. I understand that last year was a disappointing year. But as as a disappointing year, he still finished 15th overall. And I think he was drafted. I don't know if he was drafted late first or early second. But he was drafted as a, one of the top running backs in the league. And he didn't finish as, finish, finish as such. So I think people are definitely down on him. But before last year, 5.5, 5.2 yards per carry. And he was much better in the second half as well. He was 15th in terms of yards after contact. And so now everybody's big thing is that, well, he's got Tajay Spears there. Well, I think we've seen him work in tandem with running backs before. We talk about Zeke, right? Maybe he Pollard's not meant for the one-yard line to get in or assuming the goal line carry type of thing. But – you know, what we saw from him before is over a thousand yards and somewhere around 40. If you averaged the last three years, he's averaging about 40 receptions per game. 
And so I feel like 26 might be a bit low. And they have a solid offensive line. They got Cushenberry, who we're familiar with. They drafted that uh, that tackle, that right tackle out of Alabama in the first round. So I think there's a lot of things that are positive, if you want to say that, for Tony Pollard heading into this season. And just because his year was so bad last year, people were like, I don't want to touch him. And I can understand that, but I think uh, we shouldn't be just leaving him in lurch and not allowing people to, or if people are just ignoring him, I think that's going to be a big mistake. I, th- I, th- I, th- I think I think that's fair. I I worry about not knowing exactly what the roles are going to be right off the bat, and that's not going to be something that's known until this first game of the season. And so, I mean, it's it's chancy, but sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean I but, it. yeah, I agree with you there. We don't know how it's going to pan out, but they also paid him a ton of money to come over, and. Go where the money. I don't. I forget what the the saying is, but you know, follow the money. Follow the money. Thank you. Money so, walks. I don't know. Walks. I mean, I, I could be totally wrong, and and it's all uh, Tajay Spears because I mean, I liked what I saw out of Spears last year too. Um, but if if Pollard gets the the first two carries, or if they're going two, then Spears is the third down back, or they go with the hot back. I mean, obviously that's going to be <laughs> scary for any running back. But there's a lot of running back by committee running backs here this season and we'll see how it goes, but just doing some research. And I thought, uh, you know, it kind of stands out because he's been pretty good in the past. Todd, do you want to say anything or should we go into the wide receivers? Let's go to the wide receivers. Shall we? All right, Todd, we'll let you go first. Wide receivers. Give me your sleeper. All right. So I had Deontay Johnson, uh, the Carolina Panthers, obviously coming over from Pittsburgh. Um, this is probably going to give, uh, Bryce Young, probably a legitimate wide receiver weapon now um, that he hasn't had. You know, obviously he's only been in the league two years, but um, I think Deontay Johnson kind of comes in. You know, he's a big physical wide receiver. Um, you know, he's, he's you know he, he he's probably he's really good like leader. You know, kind of that veteran presence a little bit um, and so forth. And I think can help Bryce Young. Um, in that offense and I have him ranked 31st and I think he has an opportunity to maybe get into that, you know, close to, and that, that maybe top 25 range when it's all said and done. So I'm going to high on, um, Deontay Johnson. (laughs) Oh, here we go. Chuckle from Miguel. So I'll let him go. Uh, Well, I just, I don't hate the pick of Deontay Johnson. I hate what the, the explanation for it. And of course you do. Because he's not a big physical wide receiver. The dude's like 5'10", 180. Like, that's that's about as small as you could get. And then to say, like, he's a, he's a good leader. Like, the whole thing about Deontay Johnson and them questioning him is in Pittsburgh the second half of last year because he was quitting on blocks and he didn't want to block in the run game. Like, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the best, you know, leader to me. Hey, Todd's all in on Carolina. <laughs> the thing I'll say in support of Todd is that I think Bryce Young needed a possession type of receiver in the mix, and I think that fits. He he did because he had Adam Thielen already, so he needed another well, <laughs> Adam Thielen who was great in the first half and disappeared in the second mm-hmm. half. Um, but so I mean, this is what is he ten years younger, twelve years younger? Because Adam Thielen was one of the better wide receivers at the halfway point, and then old man ran out of gas. And probably shouldn't be playing in a full season anymore. <laughs> so, but for Deontay Johnson, uh, tough year last year, obviously with 59 catches, but had 88 on 144 targets two years ago, 107 in 169 games, 86 reset, or excuse me, 169 targets, 86 receptions, 147 targets the year before. So, I mean, if you're just looking for stability, I'm not saying uh, that Deontay Johnson Johnson's going to rise up my rankings, but um, I think it helps Bryce Young, if anything. I mean, I'm not super high on Johnson. What I have him, 37th? The, yeah. The, it, it, was, go ahead. it was just a big physical thing. That sure. sure. <laughs> uh, Mikey, who's your sleeper wide receiver? All right. So I liked, I really liked my, my pick yesterday, but then I didn't like it as much this morning. But I'm going to use it anyway because things work out and I – 
then we'll see how this goes. Uh, my pick was Curtis Samuel. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people like Shakir or Keon Coleman in that Buffalo passing game. They're going to need somebody to step up. I started looking into Samuel, and then I realized that, you know, the reason that they brought him in was because offensive coordinator Joe Brady has history with him. And that goes back to when Joe Brady was the OC in Carolina in 2020. That was Curtis Samuel's best season of his career. Um, He had 77 catches that that year. He had 41 rushing attempts. And believe it or not, and Eric had Curtis Samuel this season, he finished 24th in our scoring that year. So, I mean, the reason that I said I didn't like it as much this morning is because I found out that he had a turf toe injury. Oh, gosh. And so, not not the biggest of deals. They're not saying that he's going to miss the opener. It, it could be. And they're not saying that he's going to miss the opener. They're just calling him, you know, week to week at this point. So, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, that was my pick for a sleeper was Curtis Samuel. I don't hate it because we don't know what's going to happen. Wide receiver, rookie wide receivers, always tough. Uh, to to not only build a rapport with the quarterback, but just to learn the game itself, the speed and the routes. And Curtis Samuel has been through the rigors of a season before. And uh, th- and then Dalton Kincaid will, t- will take some away from him. But I don't hate that pick. And I think, you know, he's 28 years old, so he's not over the hill in terms of wide receiver age. So um, I don't hate it. I really don't because you just don't know. And it, Josh Allen, you know, for Mike, or excuse me, Todd and I, you have him pretty ranked pretty high. The ball's got to go somewhere unless, you know, Josh Allen's going to rush for 20 touchdowns to go along with 20 pass touchdowns uh, to be that good. So someone's got to reap the benefits, and we don't know who that's going to be yet. But Curtis Samuel, who's going 53rd in terms of fantasy pros, if he gets somewhere from seven to eight touchdowns and somewhere in the 50 catch range, that's going to shoot him up the rankings for sure. Um, where are we at here? Todd gave me his, Mikey gave me his. Um, and I'm going to give a guy that I've talked about many times on this show, Christian Kirk, who's going in the mid thirties. I have him ranked 24th at this current moment. Um, a lot of people are speculating that this has got to be the make or break year for Trevor Lawrence. And if it's going to happen, it's got to be with Christian Kirk benefiting on that side of things. I know, you know, for a guy that last or two years ago finished 12th overall ha- with Christian Kirk uh, or yeah, with 84 receptions, 1100 yards and eight touchdowns. Uh, he was actually had, and this was part of the board bet we had last year that he would have more points than Ridley. And he had more points than Calvin Ridley until he got hurt. Uh, not really known for his injury prone. Uh, or That's not really a, something that's associated with Christian Kirk. So I don't think that's going to be a major issue. Yes, he's dealing with the calf thing, uh, but it doesn't sound like it's too serious these days. And so if Trevor Lawrence somehow takes care of the football, takes that next step forward, I think he totally could be in the mix uh, to be in the top 15 area of wide receivers. I don't think he's going to get as much to be in the top 10. I think that's asking way too much. So Calvin Ridley had 136 targets one season ago. Kirk had 85 before his injury in 12 games. That's a, that's a few targets to be had. Be excited to see if he can, you know, get somewhere in the vicinity of 140 to 150 targets. He could have a really good season. Yeah, my only concern with Christian Kirk, and this is, is just the there's a ton of options with the Jaguars. You know, them bringing in Gabe Davis, drafting a first rounder in Thomas, and then yeah. having Ingram and ETN as well. <laughs> yeah, I just I wonder about his him seeing consistent volume. Let's get through the tight ends. We're at 43 minutes, so we'll have to pick up the pace a little bit here. Um, Mikey, we'll let you go first. Tight end sleeper. So my sleeper's Hunter Henry. Um, All right. With uh, Alex Van Pelt is the new OC in New England. And Van Pelt offenses is he was, was well, he's in New England now, but he was in Cleveland before. And they his offenses always feature tight end, especially in red zone. Look what Njoku did under him. Uh, this is a team that doesn't have a lot of quality receivers. Uh 
as bad as the offense was, I mean, it should be better quarterback play. I mean, I think Jacoby Brissett is better than Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi. And then they have the added benefit of Brissett knowing the system because he played under Van Pelt in Cleveland. So, yeah, I think Hunter Henry has a chance to be a pretty good sleeper. Yeah, and he can score some touchdowns. He had six last year, just two a couple years ago, but then nine the year before yeah. that. So there's upside for him. We'll see if he can put together a, a full season. And there's a lot new coach, a lot of new stuff going on in New England. Uh, going 17, so I don't hate that as a sleeper. Todd, give me your sleeper at tight end. Well, this one, and it's, I don't know if you really call it a sleeper because, you know, this team is you know, uh, got a lot of hype going into the offseason and coming into this season. There's a lot of mouth to feed, but Dalton Schultz, um, obviously I know there's a lot of mouth to feed, and again, there's only one football, but I think Schultz, you know, what he showed last year, I think he can be. I think he can even be even better, um, especially in that especially in that red zone uh, for uh, C.J. Stroud um, and so forth. So I think um, uh, Dalton Schultz for me um, can definitely, uh, I think, surprise su- su- surprise a lot of people, at least in my mind. Um, I'll mention mine quickly here because we need to pick up the pace. Cole Komet is a guy I'm kind of mm-hmm. looking at. Uh, again, another situation where there's a lot of talent on the, on the squad with Chicago. Uh, but this is a guy who, as I lose my spot here. So last year, he, he he's going around the 18th spot right now. Uh, last year finished seventh overall. I was surprised to kind of see that when I saw that pop up. Yeah. Over the last three years, he's been averaging 61 receptions, 625 yards. He had six touchdowns a year ago, seven touchdowns two years ago. Uh, If Caleb Williams, who looks to be the real deal, at least from what we've seen so far, uh, obviously there's Keenan Allen in the mix, and there are Odunze's in the mix, and DJ Moore. So there's not going to be a lot of opportunities for him to probably get better than 61 receptions. But if he can get somewhere in that six to seven touchdowns and finish in the top 10, he's going outside the top 15. So maybe people overlooking him a little bit. I know I was ignoring him because I was just like, ah, rookie quarterback. I don't really care. I don't want to be in that situation where he's fighting just to find quality targets. And, and if he's and if if Williams is struggling to get it to those wide receivers, safety blanket of Cole Komet, he's a tall guy. He's someone that could just you know, get it to him if, if situation's getting rough. So Cole Komet could surprise people, enter the top 15, things go right for him. Uh, let's get into the busts into this one, and I'll let Mikey go first. Give me your bust quarterback, Miguel. Well, you, you know, well, I had two options really here, but <laughs> I'm going to go with the obvious one for me, which is Justin Herbert. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know, offense is in this Jim Harbaugh, Greg Roman system is not – it's not great for quarterbacks. Uh, I'm sure they're going to have to pass at, at some points, but the volume is just not going to be there. They don't have – they got rid of all their good receiving options, even at the running back position. It's just not somebody that I want whatsoever when it comes to draft day. Herbert currently being drafted around the 18th spot is that – so he's going – Ahead of guys like Matt Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson. Is that the right area for him, or should he even be lower than that? Probably the right area, but uh, you know I would take Aaron Rodgers over him. Um, I'd assume you take Matt Stafford. I would, yeah, I would take Stafford over him, too. Deshaun Watson, I don't know. Yeah, I'd take Geno Smith over him, too. Okay. And, these are, and these are regular rankings where rushing quarterbacks are a little more – uh, appreciated because we're a point per completions, but I'm just going by what fantasy pros has here. Don't, don't, don't be surprised. Todd. Look at my rank. I did have Geno Smith over him in my ranking. So it's not too surprising. Well, that, that, that might lead into mine here. Sure. Go second. for it. Yeah. Geno Smith. That's going to be a bust oh. written all over it. No, uh, Geno Smith shocked the world last yak yeah, because, you know, cause he was the guy, you know, he was the guy that replaced Russell Wilson and, you know, obviously the expectations weren't, you know, as high because they were probably just like, okay, let's see what we got in Geno Smith. He ain't doing it this year. Um, the, I'm not even – I'm not going anywhere near Geno Smith. He's going to be bust, well, bust, bust. I feel like Geno Smith might be better this year. New offensive coordinator. Pete Carroll's out of the mix. I think they're going to do more three-wide situations. 
I feel like it, it, he could only be better. Uh, yeah, I don't. Touchdowns I don't, picks one year ago. I don't see it. No, I don't see it. Maybe I just like so, DK Metcalf too much, but yeah. Kenny Walker. I, I, I actually agree with you. Like I, I, I like Geno Smith this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, but um, I'll mention mine here. Brock Purdy, and you guys heard me talk about it before. It's all about those completions, baby. <laughs> He had one game of 25 completions last year, nine games with 20 or less. He's, there's, he's probably going to lose Brandon Ayuk. Yes, there's still a lot of great talent around him. He's not very mobile in the offensive line outside of Trent Williams, who's I think he's kind of egging, egging him on for more money, if I'm not mistaken. But everyone else on the offensive line is kind of a bunch of nobodies. So, you know, he finished 13th last year, but he's more of a guy that's probably going to finish more in the 20 to 25 area, in my opinion. And, you know, I mean, he, for him, it's so touchdown dependent. He had nine games with two or more touchdowns, and and that's great. Can he keep that up for a, another full season? I, I wouldn't be surprised, but in our league, completions are king, and you need to have those big completion games, and, and that's just not what that offense is built for. So uh, not looking super high for me on uh, Brock Purdy. Um we're on to running backs, right? Uh, running backs, busts. Mikey, go for it. Uh-oh. Is Mikey- crazy. You're going to call me crazy when I say the name, but my Uh-oh. bust is Isaiah Pacheco. Ooh. Uh, I don't like that at all. I know, I know, and I knew you wouldn't. I like the Pacheco. But, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Convince me otherwise. So I think he's fine. Like, I don't think he's going to be, like, terrible or anything like that. But I think – he has been raised up so far that I have seen him in places going like, you know, mid second, mid to, to early second round, which I just do not think is correct. Like he, you look at a team like Kansas city and, and teams with Andy Reid in general, they're, they're very heavy pass first teams, especially in the red zone. Kansas city throws the ball you know, over the past three years, more than any team in the NFL. The reason that people seem to be, you know, boosting him up to think he could take the step to that next tier is because, you know, he's going to be the three down workhorse now that Jarek McKinnon is gone. And, you know, they're not going to really work in Clyde Edwards Alaire. Well, they weren't really using Clyde Edwards Alaire anyway. And he's not an effective receiver. He had over 40 catches, but he only averaged five and a half yards per reception because he's not a he's not that big time playmaker. He's a very upright running back. He tries to beat you, you know, by just running you over. I think he's a good running back, but I I just I don't see the upside that everybody else seems to see. So if you're talking about mid second round, He's probably going around – I have him 10, so maybe he's going around the 10 to 12, depending on how many running backs go in that first round. Do you like him more than James Cook? Yes, I don't like James Cook that much either. <laughs> how about Rashad White? Oh, that's a volume guy. Yeah, not efficient at all. Josh Jacobs? That's an argument for me. Joe Mixon? I, 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 like, I like Mixon better. Okay, so those are some of the guys that are kind of around that area. Uh, I'm going to take this because this kind of goes right into the, the guy right after Joe Mixon is Devin Achan, who at 5'9", 185 pounds, can he play a full season and put up uh, – uh, people absolutely love him. I'm trying to get to the where people have him in terms of fantasy. So they have him after Pacheco at number 10. Um I mean, there's so much to talk about why why it won't. It's just based on his body size. Uh, here's some numbers I looked at, looking at his college numbers, and take it for what it's worth. College, NFL, different. Uh, he had 43 rush attempts as a freshman. Now, as a freshman, you're probably not going to get a lot of reps. As a sophomore, he had 130 attempts. And then as a junior, he had 196 attempts. Now, every year from his freshman to junior year, because he came out after his junior year, his per-game averages went down. So in his freshman year, he averaged 8.5 yards per carry amazing awesome stuff but then it went down to 7.0 when he got more attempts and then he got even more rush attempts as a junior and it went down to 5.6 and 5.6 in college is not spectacular his yards per reception because he's also pretty good at uh, catching the football out of the backfield as well uh his yards per reception 19.4 
in 40 and in, uh, in the limited time that he played. And then as a sophomore, 10.9. And then as a junior, 5.4. I just don't think his body can handle that type of workload. Now, obviously, when you get to the pros, you build your body up. Uh, we saw, But we saw it last year. He dealt with injuries. When he was on the field, he was spectacular. Mm-hmm. But an NFL season is rough. And then he's on a team where Tyreek Hill's number one. Jalen Waddle's probably number two. If he's the number three option, do you want a number three option in the early to mid second round? Probably not in my, at least in my opinion, uh, obviously he's a guy that if, if everything goes right for him, he could be the number one running back. If what he did last year rolls over into this year, but those numbers were staggering. And I just don't think he can do that for a full entire season. Todd, what, who's your running back bust? I'm going to say Raheem Moster. Um, obviously, uh, last year kind of just came out of nowhere, but I think because I have Dion, uh, Devon Achen ranked higher, and I think you know everybody he's going to get – Yeah, every, everybody does. Um, and I just think – I don't know. I think Raheem Moster is not going to have the, pro, the productivity that he had last year coming out of nowhere. I mean, I think he's still going to be productive. Don't get me wrong. But I just don't think he's going to shock the world like he did last year um, in fantasy. All right. Uh, Mikey, you want to say anything about Mostert or HN, or should we go to wide receivers? Let's move on to wide receivers. Give me yours. All right. So my wide receiver bust is Tank Dell. Uh, He's somebody that's going in the mid to late 20s as far as receivers in a lot of rankings I've seen. I told you guys one of these three is going to bust, and I think it's going to be Dell, and this is the system that Houston runs. I mean, they're running basically the Shanahan system, system that uses a fullback, a system that wants to run the ball, and they, I know they have all these receivers, but they, you know, they leave clues even in the preseason with what they're doing with formations. And so, yeah, they are still running the Shanahan system, which means that they're only running the three wide receivers about half the time. And so he's the third wide receiver, which means he is going to be on the field basically half of the time. He's not going to get enough volume. He's going to be a boomer bust type of guy. And those are not guys that I'm interested in. Love it. Love it. Todd, your wide receiver bust. Well, I'm going to go with another Texans wide receiver, Nico oh. Collins, because it, cause I said, I, I told you guys how much, um, how, how much I think Stefan Diggs is going to be, is going to be the number one option for CJ Stroud. Uh, you don't, you don't make the trades. You don't give up all the, the capital or the, whatever the case may be that that's not go get Stefan Diggs and, and have Stefan Diggs being, you know, the number two. No, he is, the, he is the number one. And I think Collins is going to kind of get not lost in the fold a little bit. I mean, Collins will probably scoot down to the number two uh, wide receiver, but I think that's going to, Diggs is going to take a lot of stuff away from Collins um, when it comes to targets and and so forth. I think they're going to, like I always say this, I'll say it to the end of time until fantasy football is no more. But they're going to for they're going to force feed Stefan Diggs the ball, plain and simple. I'll- so, so not to say I'm disagreeing, but I want to play devil's advocate just on one sure thing. Okay, and that that is we talked about following the money. Mm-hmm. And they just gave Nico Collins an extension, which pays him upwards of thirty million a year. Mm-hmm. And do you think they did that to not get him the ball? I agree that they did that to get him the ball, but you know, sometimes too, when these players get their get their money, you know, it's the reality versus fantasy. But sometimes too, that money, I don't know. Sometimes it kind of pushes their mindset a little bit over to the side. Like, well, I got paid now, so I don't really have to try too hard. But I just think I just think bringing Stefan Diggs, regardless of how much they paid Collins, um, you know, kind of changed that narrative a little bit. And um, you know, Stefan Diggs is going to be the number is going to be the number one wide receiver, and they're going to do everything in their power to get him the football, regardless of whether they gave Collins all that money. I mean, again, money is money. I get that, and it you know it changes the mindset a little bit of well, they paid him all this money, so so they think they have to get him the ball as much as that. That's not always the case. You, you you can give somebody a lot of money and, you know, that's just to kind of make them happy so then that player doesn't go somewhere else and, um, you know, 
you're, you know, you're kind of left in the winds a little bit. I mean, obviously Tank Dell can, you know, he can, I mean, obviously I know you had him as your bust, Mikey, but I just, I don't know. I think the Stefan Diggs, you know, now insert Stefan Diggs definitely changes, changes a lot of things, um, you know, for that Texans offense and that pushes the wide receivers down regardless of money. Mikey, do you have Collins over Diggs or do you have Diggs over Collins? Uh, I, let me check really quick. I'll be fast. No, that's um, fine. Let's see. I just didn't, I have rankings here, but I didn't, I don't know if you changed them or I think I've been changing. I, mine. I think I had, yeah, I had Diggs above Collins. Okay. Interesting. All right. Yeah. How, how far it, did you? Go ahead. Not very. They were, it was, they were two spots difference. Between is, is this a situation, Mikey, that you just ignore? And and draft CJ Stroud and enjoyed all that and not draft any of those wide receivers. <laughs> so you don't have to even worry about it. But CJ Stroud sounds like a guy we need to be playing higher in our rank, at least for me. Yeah, I mean, I sounds it sounds like a you know a better option of doing it that way. I just wonder if Tank Dell wasn't on Todd's team last year, if he would be different on the Nico Collins take. Well, I'm just giving yeah, well, it Todd. <laughs> sounds like he's really pushing for digs uh, more than anything. Um, I was going to do MHA trivia, but we're over an hour already. Um, do you guys know who my wide receiver bust is? I'll say it's who have been, who have been talking about since we started this podcast this year. Is it Devonta Smith? No, I love Devonta Smith. <laughs> it's Marvin Harrison Jr. Suckers. Bus oh, wow. time, bus time. So I'm going to ask you guys a quick question. Um, I was going to go deeper into this. I'm putting a lot of work in it, so I'm not going to totally ignore it. Um, but so I looked over the the first overall wide receiver selected in the last 10 NFL drafts. And Ooh. so I want you guys to guess what you think the average finish was for those 10 wide receivers in terms of fantasy, where they finished fantasy wise. What was the average finish? Todd, I'll say I'll say 15th. Mikey. That's not a fair question, because what if what? the top overall receiver was drafted like 17th versus like 5th? Well, I mean, I'm just going through the number one drafted wide receivers. Some were high. <laughs> some They were all drafted in the first round. I, I just feel like it lacks context, because like I said, you can't... Uh... You could have a receiver that was drafted third, and then the top receiver in another draft could have been drafted 26. You just never know. So my guess is uh, 36. 36. So I'm going to go through these real quick. Uh, last year, Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, first round 20th overall, he finished 43rd. Before that, Drake London, 8th overall, finished 31st. Jamar Chase, one of the outliers, he finished 6th back in 2021. He was drafted 5th overall. How about Henry Ruggs in 2020? Uh, terrible season, finished 98th. Hollywood Brown, he, he was a first round 25th overall. Uh, he finished 42nd. Uh, Ruggs was 12th overall. DJ Moore in 2018, first round 24th overall. He finished 42nd. Corey Davis in 2017, first round 5th overall. Finished 91st. Didn't have a touchdown. How about 2016, Corey Coleman? <laughs> Cleveland, 15th overall. Finished 78th. Uh, the best example, what could go right for, <laughs> in my opinion, Mr. Marvin Harrison. 2015, Amari Cooper, 4th overall where he was drafted, had 72 receptions, 1,000 yards, six touchdowns, finished 24th. And then the year before that, Sammy Watkins, he was fourth overall and finished 28th. So the average of those 10 years of both stats and average finish, so 54 receptions, 762 yards, four touchdowns, and the average finish was 48th. <laughs> so history tells us that Marvin Harrison won't finish in the top nine, and that's where he's kind of going these days. Uh, I don't know if that's a ridiculous example, but a lot of people are drafting him over Devontae Adams and Adams last four years, 110 average, I should say 110 receptions, 1400 yards and 12 touchdowns. Does that change your mind guys' mind about Marvin Harrison? No. So, cause... <laughs> no uh, cause... Out of all those receivers, you said like Todd, what do you think? Like the only one that compares is Jamar chase. Yeah, probably Jamar chase. That's one out of 10. Yeah. So that's what that was my bust. Uh, quickly, give me your tight end bust because we really have to get out of here and we have to do our bold predictions. Mikey. Okay. So my tight end bust is going to be Sam Laporta. 
A lot of what he did was based on touchdowns. I think he's a good player. I just, him going over Kelsey and over Mark Andrews, it bothers me a little bit. I don't, it, it would take a lot, you know, for him to get to that double digit touchdown mark. I don't think he's going to reach it. And so while I think he probably still finishes top 10, I don't think he's far and away the number one tight end. You'd be surprised if he finished number one. I would be surprised. Todd, who's your tight end bust? I'm going to say Evan Ingram uh, is going to be my bust. I mean, I'm maybe not a big believer in him. Obviously, um, you know, it's kind of up and down for him. I mean, there's good weeks, bad weeks, but, um, you know, I haven't ranked eighth, but I don't know. I'm just, I don't know. I, I think he's going to, I think he's going to disappoint. He's going to go back to the, he's going to have a disappointing season like he did back when he was with the Giants a little bit. Obviously, that was their only offense, but, um, I think he's going to be, I, I think a lot of people are high on him and I'm not, or I think uh, he's going to end up being a bust. Sure. Uh, mine is TJ Hawkinson. I know that's weird considering he's a, he's injured and he's not going to play in, until maybe October, but he's gone 15th. And even when he comes back it's Sam Darnold running things. And I've already mentioned when I thought about Sam Darnold who, you know, had, did not do anything with the tight ends he previously had. Sure, Chris Herndon and Ryan Griffin aren't the best tight ends on the planet, uh, but I just don't want – I'm not willing to, you know, even put him in my IL spot, even when he's back. Is it – you know, he's coming off a major injury where his entire leg was tore up. It wasn't just one thing. It was multiple uh, tendons that he ripped. So I think I'm not I'm, – I'm not one to draft him as my – Especially with our lower space, lower roster size, are, we, are you going to keep a backup tight end? Or even if you put him on your IL, is he going to come out and do what he did last year without Kirk Cousins? Mikey called Kirk Cousins a tight end whisperer. Uh, he's no longer there. So I think TJ Hawkinson might be going a little high here. Okay, bold predictions. Uh, everybody's excited to sure hear about Todd. So Todd, give me your best one. So my bold prediction for this coming season for fantasy football. Hold on tight. Let me grab my britches real quick. All right, everybody. Just hold. Uh, but it's supposed uh, to be bold. It's supposed to be crazy yeah. and wild. You know, check to make sure you're still breathing. Check the pulse here because this might this might just blow your mind. My bold prediction is going to be. Bo Nix is going to be number one card. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I was ready to jump through the microphone and <laughs> rip your throat out. Well done. Yeah. That was well done, Todd. Thank you. No, but my real bold prediction is Jordan Love will finish as the number one fantasy quarterback this year. Is that bold, Miguel? Uh, given how he finished, I don't know. Like, I was expecting, you know, something way out of left field. That Yeah, I don't think that's unreasonable. I mean, he's, he's going 10th currently. Um, would we be surprised if he finished number one? Maybe a little, but it's not like Josh Allen with, with all the stuff we talked about this year and Lamar Jackson, Jalen hurts and Joe Burrows hurt and Dak Prescott may not have CD lamb, but okay. Is it the boldest of bold? Probably not, but I appreciate you and your thoughts on like why the like the elements are there for him to be the number one. Yeah. And maybe that's why it's not as bold because we could see it happening. Well, here's what I'm going to say, Todd. Yes. He's not going to be the number one quarterback. Oh. Because Patrick Mahomes is going to break Peyton Manning's record for total touchdowns scored by a quarterback in a single season. Oh. Peyton Manning had 56 in 2013. He threw for 55, rushed for one. So Mahomes will have at least 47. There's going to be 57 total touchdowns in 2024. Ooh, that's that, a good one. That's a bold one. That's... A lot going on there. Rasheed Rice doesn't look like he's going to be suspended. Xavier Worthy is playing well in the preseason. Travis Kelsey still in the mix. Andy Reid, so one of the best offensive minds in the game. The offensive line's better. Patrick Mahomes is a little healthier than he was last year. 57 total touchdowns, at least. But that's a bold yeah. prediction. That's wild. Mikey, what do you have on your end? So uh, mine is Bronco related. Oh, I have a Bronco one too. 
<laughs> but we'll see if we get to that. But go ahead. I have uh, Javante Williams uh, finishing as a top fifteen running back. Wait a minute. Didn't we? Didn't you say? Or maybe I heard you wrong. That you, you thought the rookie was going to be the best running back on the squad. And maybe that's changed, and that's okay. But I, th- I thought that was something you said out through. I don't know if it was the rookies or the rookie. Back, but, well, no. Well, in the rookies episode or in the running backs. Oh, well, episode. Estimate. Yeah. I talked about it. Yeah. Estimate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, things have happened. And so sure. yeah, I don't yeah. think that's going to happen <laughs> but it's now bold. at this point. It's definitely bold. It's definitely bold. You know, Sean Payton's a guy that loves to use a lot of running backs. I mean, I like Jaleel McLaughlin too. And I think the Broncos kind of showed their hand the other night that they do too. when they, played him ahead of Samaj P. Ryan, who looks like yeah. he actually is fighting for his job. Yeah, he could be cut, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, so, but I, I mean, I like Javante. If this is an offense that is better than we thought with Bo Nix behind the, the helm, I mean, I think Javante has a pretty good shot to surprise some people and, you know, score some touchdowns in this offense and, you know, potentially be a pretty good running back for the first time in a while. Does he rush for a thousand yards? I would say he's capable. I don't know if he gets there. I think that he probably would finish somewhere like in the eight to nine hundreds, but has potential for double digit t- touchdowns, which gets him probably within that top fifteen. Because I think he's going to have receptions too. Okay, I like that. That's a good I like that one. We haven't had a thousand yard. We haven't had close to a thousand yard rusher anyway in a while. Anyway, so. I mean, there was only like seven guys that rushed for a thousand yards last year. It's not a thing that happens all that much anymore. It's true. So, so here's my Bronco one, and I'll just mention this real quick. Broncos won't have a single player, uh, position wise, that will finish inside the top twenty. Not Javante Williams. Not Bo Nix. Not Cortland Sutton. Not Greg Dulcich if he's the tight end. I don't know if that's bold or just I'm a hater. <laughs> that's probably more that. <laughs> but that was I couldn't come up with a lot of good bold predictions. I don't know. That was just one that was just like, oh, don't shit on the Broncos. But here I am. I was going to say, yeah, Troy Franklin's <laughs> not going to be is is actually going to do something. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's my other. One. That's my other bold prediction. Troy Troy, Troy Franklin's gonna mm. gonna be a top thirty wide receiver. How about that? Oof, that is bold. <laughs> I just I, all I'll say is I was right about my one last year with Cortland Sutton. So we'll you were, you were, time. you definitely were. Um, anything else? Because we probably should get out of here. We're coming up to the end here. Did you have another good one, or so we? That's how how, how we should end it on our Broncos bold predictions. I think that's I think, that, I think that oh, sums it up pretty well. We have we have some we have some love for the Broncos and a little bit of hate. You know, brings it together, and maybe that'll lead to. You know, that'll lead to some success, you know, for the Broncos this season. There you go. Any last thoughts from you, Miguel? Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody get get ready for a fun draft. I mean, we have two less rounds this year, so it won't uh, take as long. And um, we still got some business to do next week before we get there. Mm-hmm. Last quick bowl prediction. I said Demir White would lead the NFL in rushing in 2024. Ooh. That's a little nutty, but... Thing. That's that's the one I came up with. But yeah, you probably appreciate that one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, less than two weeks. Let's go, everybody. Get their list together. Uh, make sure you have the the Google Doc. We'll get that out here soon. And then it's drafting time. Okay. We gotta get out of here. Eric Lansing, Mike Renault, Todd Diamond. We'll see you next time.